This is a Volvo S60 Polestar, and it is a Swedish sports sedan. Now, you may not think of Volvo as a company that makes sporty cars, but this one is a little different. It has all-wheel drive, it has 416 horsepower, and it has 495 pound-feet of torque. It's also turbocharged, supercharged, and it's a plug-in hybrid. Needless to say, this car is very much worthy of a review, and so today, I'm going to review it. First, a little overview on this car. Now, the S60 has been out for around 20 years now, and this is the latest version of it. It's been just redesigned for the 2019 model year. They sell the S60 in three versions. There's the base level T5 with 250 horsepower, then there's the T6 with 316 horsepower, and then there's the plug-in hybrid T8 with 400 horsepower. And then, building on the T8, there's this, the Polestar model from Volvo's high-performance Polestar division. It has a little extra power and better brakes and better suspension for a more thrilling Volvo experience. Which sounds cool, except you can't get one of these. For the 2019 model year, Volvo only made 20 S60 Polestars for the entire country, and they sold out online in less than an hour. <laughs> now, for the 2020 model year, Volvo says they're probably going to make a more reasonable, rational production run, so it's likely that you'll soon be able to go down to your dealer and pick up one of these. And it might be worth a serious look because this car, on paper at least, is pretty impressive. Like I mentioned, 416 horsepower, 495 pound-feet of torque, and it has all-wheel drive. It'll do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. Now, pricing is unknown because when Volvo made their really small production run for 2019, it was only available through Volvo's monthly payment subscription service. But when they make more of them for 2020, figure the regular T8 starts around $55,000, $56,000, so this will probably be well over $60,000 with all of its Polestar upgrades. Now, more than sixty dollars for a Volvo is a lot, but then this car offers a lot, and today I'm going to show you around it. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of this car and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the S60 Polestar, click the link below to visit autotrader.com oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of some of the lesser-known performance sedans currently listed for sale on Autotrader, aside from your usual C63 AMGs and BMW. M3s. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the S60 on the outside, and I want to start with the Polestar badge. Now, if you're like me, you've always loved Volvo's Polestar high performance brand badge because it was this cool light blue that nobody else was using. Very distinctive. It was a nice little touch whenever you saw one on a car. Yeah, well, that's gone. Now they're using this. It's white. Not sure why they ditched the blue, but I will miss it. And speaking of colors, this car has some weird ones. I guess all the other automakers have taken the regular high-performance colors, like red or gray-black carbon fiber, so Volvo has gone with white and gold. This car has a lot of gold accents on it. For instance, the brake calipers are gold. Rather large, they say Polestar engineered on them. If you go inside, you will also see that the seat belts are gold, which is an unusual color, but I guess Polestar is taking that as their color to emphasize their sportiness. My personal favorite, though, is on the wheels. The valve stems are gold, <laughs> which again, that's an odd thing to even change the color of, but Volvo has to make it a little more distinctive that you have the Polestar version. And next up, we move inside the S60 Polestar with the camera perfectly angled so you can see the gold seat belts. There are a lot of quirks and features in here. I'm going to start with one of my favorite, and that would be the engine starter switch. Unlike a boring button, like a lot of automakers have, Volvo has this cool switch in the middle. You just twist it, and that starts the engine, or the hybrid system in this car. And I really like this switch. It makes starting the car a lot more exciting and interesting than most cars. Same goes for the drive mode selector right beneath the engine starter switch. If you push it, you access the drive mode 
nodes on your infotainment screen, and then you just kind of roll it up or down in order to change the drive mode. I really, really like those two things in conjunction. They make normal buttons and switches a little bit more interesting. Now, speaking of interesting, one unusual item with that drive mode selector, you can choose between all your typical drive modes, sport, comfort, etc. but there's also one for all-wheel drive. If you're in like a low traction situation ice, you can actually use the drive mode button to engage all-wheel drive permanently, and then it stays on, and it doesn't just sort of wait until there's slippage in order to engage the all-wheel drive system. That's a rare feature in an all-wheel drive car. Now, beyond the starter switch and the drive mode selector, the other interesting item in the center console here is the gear lever, which is rather odd. First off, it's crystals, made by this company, Orofors, and you can see on the logo, there is a seal. Do you have a picture of a seal on your shifter? No, you don't. Now, I like the look and feel of this shifter, but I've never really liked the operation of this shifter because it always goes back to the middle position no matter what gear you're in. So when you start the car, you're in park, you pull it down once you're in neutral, then it goes back to the middle. You pull it again and you're in drive, then it goes back to the middle. To get it into reverse, you push it forward, neutral, push it forward again for reverse. You never really know what gear you're in. This is probably my least favorite shifter setup in the entire car industry. Fortunately, there is is in the gauge cluster a little guide to letting you know what gear you're in, but you pretty much have to use that extra guide in the gauge cluster to find out whether you're in reverse or drive because you absolutely can't tell based on the position and the feel of the shifter. Almost every other automaker does it better. Now, next up, we move on to the center console, which is rather unusual in this car. Because of the location of the batteries, sort of in this center tunnel underneath the interior, the center console is tremendously small. Look at how tiny this is. It's not deep at all. You basically can't put anything in there. In fact, you could barely fit a phone in here. So Volvo has thought of an interesting idea. At the front of the center console, there's a little phone stand. You can plug in your phone to the USB port in the center console and then sort of stand it up and still close the center console so your phone has a place to go if you kind of want to put it away somewhere and it will stand in that little area in front of the center console. Now, another item I found in the center console when I was poking around is in this little bag. It is a cloth. Volvo gives you this cloth when you buy a Volvo. It is intended for you to wipe your infotainment screen, and the cloth even has directions on it for how to wipe. Basically, you hold the home button on the infotainment screen for two seconds as the cloth tells you, and then the screen goes dark. It goes into sort of its cleaning mode. You can clean the screen with your cloth without accidentally pressing anything, and then you can press the home button to turn it back on, and your screen is now clean thanks to your Volvo-provided cloth. Other interesting items in this car, the seats are very nice, very luxurious. I love their look, I love their trim. And if you look closely, you will find a little tiny Swedish flag that kind of pokes out from the side of the seats, which is a nice little Volvo touch. Another nice little Volvo touch is over on the driver's door panel. You have the power window switches. You also have the mirror controls. And here's a little Volvo Easter egg for you. If you hold down the left and right mirror control at the exact same time, the mirrors will fold in. A lot of people have Volvos for years. They don't know it can do that. Now, next, we move on to the buttons in the center control stack. Although if you look in here, you might think, what buttons? Volvo has gone minimalist here. They've removed almost all buttons. They've got it down to just six total in the center control stack, which is a very cool look. Interestingly, all six of those are sort of over on the left on the driver's side. On the passenger side, you have just blanks, including one button that just has a white dash on it that isn't actually a button. It doesn't do anything, but I guess it's there for symmetry. It's kind of odd to see that. But anyway, so if you look at those buttons, you'll think, well, where are the climate controls? That means this is one of those cars where they've integrated the climate controls into the infotainment system. Now, normally I hate that, but Volvo makes it so easy. That's because Volvo's screen is rather large, and so there's always room for the climate controls to be at the bottom, and they're there all the time. So anytime you want to change the temperature, you just tap the temperature and and move it up or down with this little slider. Incredibly easy. If you want to change more than that, you just press this little climate control-y thing in the middle, and then you can change the rest of the climate controls. Again, very simple. Even though they've integrated it into the screen, it's really, really easy to use. And just in case you don't want to deal with the screen to change the temperature, you can always press this little voice button on the steering wheel and give the car a command. Here's the one I like to use. I'm cold. 
temperature set to 73 degrees. Now, with the climate controls integrated into the infotainment system, it also means they've integrated the heated seat controls in there, which is normally something I hate. But again, in this car, tremendously easy. You just tap this little seat icon on the screen and then turn on the heated seats. It's just as easy as if there actually was a physical button. Volvo has done this really, really well. And speaking of Volvo doing this well, this infotainment system is one of my very favorite in the entire car industry, mostly because it operates just like a smartphone. First off, it's incredibly responsive to your touch. Every time you tap the screen, move anything anywhere, it immediately responds with zero lag. It's probably the least laggy infotainment system in the business, or it's right up there with the other very best ones. But the other thing I like about it is at the very bottom of the screen, there is a physical button. That's the home button, just like a lot of smartphones have. You push it and it always goes back to your home screen, which makes it easy if you're getting confused, whatever, just press that and you go right to your familiar home screen. Really, really good setup. Again, I really think this is one of the best and easiest to use infotainment systems in the entire car industry. One really interesting item with this infotainment system, by the way, it doesn't use capacitive touch like your phone and like a lot of other screens. Because this is Volvo from Sweden where it's cold and people wear gloves, they didn't wanna do that. So instead it uses infrared. There are little infrared lines going around the screen to make sure you're about to touch it and then it responds to your touch, which might be one reason why it's just so quick. And so if you try it using like a glove or something on your hands, it will respond which is better than a lot of other systems that won't. I like that. Now, next up, a few interesting quirks and features of the infotainment system. I went over some of these when I reviewed the Volvo XC40, which I'll link in the description below, but I'm going to give you a few more. Some of them are unique to this car. For example, you can drive this car using just the gasoline engine. There's a mode called hold, and if you turn that on, it will hold the battery charge and it won't use the battery electric motor at all. It'll just use the gas motor if for whatever reason you wanna preserve your battery for later. There's also a feature you can use in the infotainment system called charge, where it will direct the car specifically to use the gasoline engine to charge the electric motor. Obviously that uses a little bit more gas, but it will keep your electric motor and your batteries charged for a lot longer. Now, next up, another thing you can do on that screen with the hold and charge icons, you can drop the rear headrest. There's a little icon, you push it, and the rear headrests drop instantly. Now, a lot of luxury cars have this, but usually it's a button. You never see it in a screen, and it's kind of odd to press a screen and then have something mechanical happen, but that's how it works in the S60. Now, one other interesting item with that screen where all of those icons are is that you can move around the icons to suit your needs. For example, if you plan to drop the rear headrest frequently, you can move it up to the top, in the easiest to reach position. Now, next up, moving on to some of the other infotainment quirks and features. One is the fact that you can change your sound experience, how music plays in here. And one of the sound experiences you can choose is the Gothenburg Concert Hall, which is the big concert hall in Gothenburg, Sweden, where Volvo's headquarters is located. And it has a picture of the concert hall. And if you click the little eye, it actually explains kind of a history about the concert hall and why it's so important to have your car sound like it, which is kind of interesting. Unfortunately, your other sound experience options are far less exciting. You can also choose individual stage, whatever that means, and you can select studio, which is where you can kind of aim the sound throughout the car, front, rear, driver, passenger, etc. And next up, speaking of the sound system in this car, a couple of interesting quirks and features there. One is the fact that AM radio doesn't exist. You have FM, you have XM, but apparently they had trouble getting AM radio and the batteries, there was static or interference, so they just got rid of it. So if you're an AM radio fan, you probably won't want one of these. Another cool thing about the infotainment system and the music, this one I really like. If you go to XM radio, you can see it shows a channel list and it shows what song is playing on each individual channel as you scroll through. So you can kind of scroll through all the channels and then just decide which one you want to choose, not based on the channel, but based on which song is playing. That is a really cool idea. And it's another benefit of Volvo's vertical infotainment screen that's a little bit taller so you can have longer lists like that with more information. Now another interesting quirk of the infotainment system is a feature called record and send which is rather bizarre. Okay you click on it and then you enter an email address and then there's a little microphone and you can record a message which I have. 
Hello, Doug. <laughs> Time to explore your quirks and features. Now, once you've recorded your message, you can then send it to that email address that you entered a moment ago. You press send and it sends. And then in your email inbox, you get a voice file with that recorded message in it. Hello, Doug. <laughs> Time to explore your quirks and features. So if you're driving along in your S60 and you want to record a message and send it to someone and you don't want to just call them or send them like a voice text, you can email them a recorded message straight from your infotainment system which is something I suspect nobody will use. Now, next up, we move on to the gauge cluster in this car, which is reasonably advanced. It's not as configurable as some rivals. You can't quite do as much with it, but it does have a big map in the middle. It's very easy to read and reasonably useful. But the best quirk of the gauge cluster is you can pull up a menu that lets you select what the gauge cluster displays on the bottom. You have a bunch of different options, your fuel economy, your instant fuel economy, your range, that sort of thing. But you can also choose something called GPH. And what exactly is that? That would be gallons per hour. It will display for you how many gallons of fuel you're using per hour in case you calculate fuel economy that way for whatever possible reason, it will show that. I've never seen another car that will display your GPH. Now, next we move into the back of the S60 Polestar. And the first thing you notice back here is this big hump in the middle on the floor. Again, this is where battery stuff is located. And the result of that is the middle seat passenger in this car is gonna be rather uncomfortable because their feet are gonna kinda of have to straddle this hump rather than just sticking your legs out in front of you. Definitely a drawback if you actually plan to carry five people frequently in a sedan. But surely Volvo understands this rather uncomfortable positioning. And so they've decided to make up for it with the fact that even the middle seat belt back here is gold. Not just the outer two belts. No, no, even the middle passenger gets their own gold seat belt so they don't have to feel all that left out. Now, speaking of the middle, if you look in the middle, you'll notice there are no climate vents, but there are climate vents that come to the back seat. They're just located on the pillars on either side of the two front seats. And you can see that the little switch in the middle says off on it. If you move that switch down, it will turn off the climate vents if you don't want air to be blown on you as a rear seat passenger. Now, next we move along to the S60's trunk, and you will notice over here the white Polestar logo. Not as good as the blue one, but that's what they're going with. Anyway, you open up the trunk and you will discover a bag with a little Volvo logo on it. Open the bag and that is this car's charging stuff. It is a plug-in hybrid. And so this is the stuff you use to actually plug it in and charge up the battery. Other than that, the trunk is fairly normal, fairly standard, nothing particularly exciting. It's just a car trunk. But there is one cool feature that comes when you close the trunk. Now this isn't a power trunk. You can't push a button and it closes automatically, but it does have a button near the top that you can push. So what does that do? Well, it's a lock that activates once the trunk is closed. So you push that button, you get your briefcase or your luggage out, you close the trunk and then all of the doors are locked and you can walk away without having to go back up to a door and lock it or use the key fob you just press that button first and it locks everything that is a smart idea now next up finally we move under the hood and like i mentioned before yes you heard me right this car is four things turbocharged supercharged plug-in hybrid and not something i would want to own out of warranty <laughs> it seems like there's a lot going on in here i'll maybe take a little time let the technology mature for a little while before i think about buying something like this used but it is an impressive feat to have all of it and the numbers speak for themselves 415 horsepower 495 pound feet it's pretty strong one interesting thing under the hood here is that the cover on top of the engine isn't plastic instead it's like a foam material volvo told me they do this for pedestrian safety if you hit someone with your car and their head comes down and hits the hood, it won't kind of impact the really, really hard engine block. Instead, it has this foam surface to kind of bounce off of, which makes it a little bit safer. And that's kind of a neat idea. The other interesting thing under here that I like is this little warning label that warns you not to jumpstart the car in this position. Just two little cars with their hood up and a cord connecting them and then a do not sign. I just find it to be rather charming. 
And so those are the quirks and features of the Volvo S60 Polestar. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the S60 Polestar, one of the rarest cars on the market although nobody else knows that. So I'm in sport mode. I've been driving this car for a couple days and the conclusions I've come to are as follows. First off, it is really quick in a straight line, especially in sport mode. Very responsive, very quick. Um, there's a lot of power. Obviously it has the electric motor as well. So there is some of that crazy instant torque you get from an electric motor. And in that sense, this car is quick. It feels fast because it is fast. Whoa. Now it's no C63, it's no big V8 whatever, but it's quick, it's fast, and it feels good. With that said, the drawback is, compared to a typical performance sedan, the drawback is obviously the dynamics. Um, it's just not quite as good. When you're in sport mode, the steering feels relatively tight, it feels relatively sharp compared to a regular S60, but not compared to like an M3 or a C63 or whatever. It's just not all that great. There's some body roll around corners, not much, but the real problem is you just have sort of a steering vagueness that you don't get in those cars. Turn in is a little bit vague and it's just not as satisfying. The precision isn't quite there if you're going hard you know, on like a canyon road through a lot of twisty stuff. It's just not there. You feel a little bit more disconnected than you do in a standard, you know, performance sedan. But obviously I think an enormous part of the appeal of this car is that it brings kind of a sporty aspect to, you know, a Volvo. So you can have a Volvo and have your typical sensibility and it's not as expensive and it has good technology and safety, but also you have some sportiness. And in that level, it, this car works brilliantly because it's exactly that. You, instead of looking at it compared to like an M3, look at it compared to a regular Volvo. You get all the same stuff you get in a normal Volvo, but you also get a little bit more performance, a little bit more fun, a little more excitement. And on, on that level, it's really cool. Is it worth $65,000, $70,000 if that's where they're gonna price it? Tough call. Sedans in general are, are dying. The new S60 has not been particularly popular. Neither is Volvo's S90. Their SUVs are white hot. The dealers can't stock enough XC40s, 60s, 90s, but the sedans are just really slow. And it would be hard for me to justify spending that much money for like the top end of a sedan when you know sedans just aren't there anymore, unless you really, really want it. And I think that's probably part of the reason why Volvo only released 20 of these. They were like, well, we can sell 20. Can we sell 500? Can we sell 1,000? Might be harder. And so that's the Volvo S60 Polestar. Now, this isn't going to take down the BMW M3 or the Mercedes AMG C63 anytime soon. It's nowhere near as fast and it isn't on that level dynamically either, but it's still cool. And it's a good way to get great technology and Volvo's sort of subtle under the radar brand name and luxury and still have some fun behind the wheel. And now it's time to give this car a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the S60 is handsome, nice looking for a sedan, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Handling is okay, not amazing, but better than the Volvo Norm, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is average. After a few fast acceleration runs, there's not that much excitement left, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Cool factor is also low. It may be the rare Polestar model, but most people just see it as a Volvo sedan, and it gets a 4 out of of 10 for a total weekend score of 26 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This car is loaded with a lot of tech and it stops just short of some of the very best and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is normal for the class and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is excellent with good materials, though I do worry about long-term reliability, still it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for the class and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is hard without knowing exact pricing, but given my assumptions of around $65,000, this is pricey and it's a little hard to justify over a lot of good rivals. It gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 32 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 58 out of 100, which places it here in this very competitive segment. I prefer the BMW M340i and the Tesla Model 3, though the S60 Polestar holds its own against a few very popular rivals. It's a good effort. Hey!